my roots are very deep in Oregon. I have eight generations of my family in this state, and the ancestors came to Oregon before it was a state in 1857. My great-great-grandfather walked up from California, then proceeded on his walk to Portland and established a one-man store on the riverfront in Portland. And there were a number of stores at that time. And why he started the 11th, nobody knows, but he did. And it eventually grew into Meyer and Frank, which was the major retail organization in the Pacific Northwest and one of the major stores in the country. My education uh, started at Ainsworth Grammar School in Council Crest in Portland. Uh, I was elected um, mayor of uh, Ainsworth, and I, I laugh about the fact that uh, that was my only personal political activity and uh, I thought I would quit while I was ahead. With a winner there, uh, I wouldn't try, try again. I could help others, but I didn't have the ego to pursue it myself. So I went then to Lincoln and uh, uh, had uh, four years uh, there enjoyed it very much, and uh, I was active in uh, Lincoln uh, with various things, uh, with the Cardinal, which was the publication there. And I went from there to Stanford. I was at Stanford for a year and two-thirds. I have to say that I didn't like it. There were too many spoiled rich kids, and um, I enlisted in the Army. I was assigned to uh, the field artillery, and uh, I took my basic training in uh, North Carolina and in California. Uh, during the time in California, I. Uh, was at Loyola University, uh, which uh, I enjoyed a lot. And uh, it was a little bit different kind of education for, it was more on the engineering side. Um, then uh, I w went overseas in World War II in the field artillery of the 89th Infantry Division. And when the war was over in Europe, the Army took one man from each division that was left in Europe to uh, go to uh, the Sorbonne in Paris, to Oxford in England, and to Cambridge. Well, I was the lucky guy chosen to, uh, from my division to go to Cambridge. I spent a term there and just loved it. The opportunity to have an education with the people of the caliber of Bertrand Russell and John Maynard Keynes, you know, and, and living in Europe, and being able to travel there was a great opportunity. When I got out of the Army, then I came back and went to work in the family department store. You are living with 
your associates 24 hours a day. I, I, there were people who I had never known existed and their outlook and their lives and their upbringing and their value system, you know, was so different from what I had known about. And it was so healthy for me to see that. I was grateful that I had the opportunity and it helped me in, in later life to have seen and working shoulder and shoulder with uh, Mexicans and, and uh, Native Americans and, and uh, blacks and all manner of individuals, not just the kind of people I grew up with. So how could, how could you get an experience like that otherwise? Where could you become a part of a society like that? No place but the military. Uh, being the boss's son, uh, you naturally start at the top. And I started at the top, which was the 15th floor. And that was the receiving room. And so uh, my dad put me to work opening boxes. And when I got through opening smaller boxes, I got promoted to opening bigger boxes. But he wanted me to get to know how a department store worked. We had over 3,000 employees at that time. He wanted me to get to know them, and he wanted them to get to know me. And uh, my dad was a real tough taskmaster, but I look back on it well. And so that was a great, great opportunity. I was then named to uh, plan and uh, open uh, the first branch store in Salem, Oregon. In preparation of that, my dad sent me on a trip around the world for a year, visiting the great department stores everywhere, in Europe, in Asia, in various cities in America, to get ideas. And the Salem Marn Frank was a compilation of all the great things that I learned during that trip and uh, it worked out very well. We had a great staff, and it was a wonderful uh, 10 years there. Um, it ended when there was a family uh, parting. Uh, the Myers wanted to uh, sell the store. The Franks wanted to keep it a family store. Uh, the Myers uh, were able to get uh, enough stock to uh, sell it to uh, the May Company, which was a, a terrible mistake, very unpopular with the, the public in Oregon. They looked at Myron Frank as their store. I left the store at that time. I didn't want anything to do with the May Company. And uh, I decided to give my life to public service. I admired Mark Hatfield for the kind of leader he was and what his goals were. And uh, combining that with my desire for public service, I felt that this was someone that uh, I wanted to learn from, and he very uh, kindly uh, asked me to chair his campaigns, and 
after he finished two terms as governor uh, for the Senate, and we won those. So I chaired every one of his, of his campaigns until I left in 1992, and we never lost a campaign. He uh, asked me to become his chief of staff, which I did. I utilized my experiences as in running a, a constituent-oriented business at a department store, doing transferring that to a political atmosphere and making sure that people felt friendly and had their needs taken care of and that we were ad adapting to the needs of the people who put us back there. We chose people to be on the staff who were talented and who could get to the root of any of the problems that would come up during that time, and they were experts in it. And uh, we made every effort to uh, follow uh, the senator's views on those things. He was anti-war, he was anti-guns, he was anti-abortion, and, and all the things that were hot buttons. And uh, there are ways of handling those things if you explain them to the people who were concerned. If you take time to explain to people, uh, th then they will understand why the senator took a view as he did. They may not always agree, and I didn't always agree with the senator's views on an issue. And I would discuss that with him, and I would say, Senator, I, I don't agree with that. That was in the privacy of the meetings between the two of us. Never, ever publicly did I disagree with the senator on any stand. My job was to learn from him, to support him, and to utilize my position in educating the public of why he thought that way. He uh, asked me to chair his campaign for governor, uh, which uh, I did, and uh, uh, he, he said at that time, Jerry, if we win, I'm going to appoint you the judge of the chocolate cakes at the Oregon State Fair. And uh, we did win, and I did get appointed. And uh, the first year there were three cakes with a judging in the back room of the Oregon State Fair. And uh, as we speak, we are coming upon the 60th year where I have been the sole judge of the cakes, and we've had as many as 132 cakes to judge. I feel very grateful that the state of Oregon has been so good to me and my family and I appreciate the, what I think is the respect that I have um, for the people of the state. I feel very fortunate for the opportunity that I've had as a family, as my education, as my experiences, as time in the service of our country, time in Washington, a time exploring the state. How many people have that wonderful opportunity? And I realize that, and I'm grateful for it.